welcome to the BMW 5 Series, otherwise known as the ultimate business barge for those at the top of the corporate company car tree. Wind back 20 years and the motorways of Great Britain were filled with large executive saloons ferrying their important owners from city to city as they closed important deals. And while cars like the 5 Series, Mercedes-Benz E-Class and Audi A6 have been overtaken by more fashionable SUV rivals in the last two decades, there's no denying that there is still some seriously good car design under the skin. There's so much this car that I'm going to have trouble covering it all off in just this video. But if you want to know more, then do head over to parkers.co.uk and check out our detailed written review of the 5 Series range. I'm Hope Ellen, and this is another Parker's Cars Review. Before I get started, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you get a reminder every time we publish a new video. The 5 Series is currently available with a very wide range of engines. You can choose from the super efficient 520D to a low CO2 530E plug-in hybrid to the car we've got here which is the 530 horsepower M550i X-Drive. And if that's not enough, there's the stupidly fast BMW M5 Halo models topping off the range. Slide yourself into the exceptionally comfortable leather driver's seat and you are greeted by probably one of the best cabin layouts in the business. Yes, if you're coming into the 5 Series from a 10-year-old 1 Series, then all the screens and control mechanisms may seem a bit overwhelming. But trust me, it doesn't take long to get used to what this cabin has to offer, and there's a lot. Driving position is absolutely spot on, especially if you like to sit nice and low. Electric adjustment is standard, but you will have to pay more for the memory function. You've got surprisingly good visibility looking forwards for such a big car, mainly thanks to the slender front pillars. The over the shoulder view is a little bit more restricted, but then parking is made easier by a suite of cameras and sensors that really help you thread the five series into gaps. All round interior quality is excellent with the materials feeling worthy of this particular car's near 90 thousand pound price tag a mercedes-benz e-class may have a fancier looking cabin but i definitely think this one is better built the 5 series is currently available with three trim levels ranging from se to the hugely popular m sports to this the m5 50i x drive whichever one you go for however you're going to get a broad spread of standard equipment including a 12.3 inch central infotainment screen and digital dashboard display, BMW intelligent personal assistant, parking assistant, heated front seats and LED headlamps. As with all BMWs, the infotainment system is a benchmark. Yes, the sheer amount of features may mean it feels daunting at first, but I promise that when you get used to the features, they are absolutely fantastic. It's super responsive, the graphics are attractive, and there's plenty of customization on offer. I'm also a fan of how many control methods you get. There's the touch screen. You've also got the rotary dial controller down here, complete with a touchpad. There's also voice control and steering wheel control for media and gesture control, which is fitted as an optional extra on this car. Is that last one a bit of a gimmick? Yes. Probably, but I do like the way that you get a choice of control method. And also, needless to say, I'm a big fan of the way that BMW has stuck with physical heater and aircon controls. So much easier than many cars where you have to dive into the infotainment system just to warm up your bum. What I also like is that it doesn't control absolutely everything. There's still plenty of switches and buttons which are nice and easy to use while on the move. Because this car is very highly specced, I'm also lucky enough to be enjoying the Technology Plus Pack and the Comfort Plus Pack. Highlights of the former include a wireless phone charger, head-up display, and the very handy BMW drive recorder. Now this can act as a hidden dash cam in the event of an accident. Meanwhile, the Comfort Plus Pack nets you things like heated steering wheel, we all know how much I love that, ventilated front seats, rear heated seats as well so you can warm up everyone's bum in the vehicle 
Final tech point I want to mention concerns this digital dash display because while it's easy and clear to understand, if you're expecting the customization and functionality of rival systems from Mercedes and Audi, then you will be disappointed. It is pretty limited in that respect. Meanwhile, cabin storage is about average. You've got uh, respectively sized door pockets, a decent glove box there, and my favorite bit, you've got enough space under the central armrest. Watch this. I'm very easily impressed. I very much like that. Boom and boom. The BMW 5 Series is undoubtedly a big car, but it's very much the kind of car that you drive rather than be driven in. Therefore, rear seat space is good enough for two tall adults, but it's not quite as generous as you'd find in an Audi A6 or a Volvo S90. For ultimate rear passenger room, you'll want to have a look at the BMW 7 Series. The 5 Series' boot capacity measures up at 530 litres. But this is a different story in plug-in hybrid versions, where total space drops to 410 litres. You'll also have to bear in mind that the boot opening isn't as practical as an estate or SUV, while you need to pay around £400 extra for split-folding rear seats. Now, before we take the BMW 5 Series out on the road, we've got a quick usability test, as per usual, in the form of Hope's Car Olympics. So against the clock, I've got to fold down the rear seats so they're flat, tune in the radio to Absolute FM, and set the sat nav to take me to Buckingham Palace so I can visit Queen Lizzie. Now, this is going to be fun with all the control methods. I'm feeling confident, but let's see how I get on. Start the timer, please. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so we've got it down to the boot. It's electric boot, so. Oh, yeah. How slick is that? Sexy, sexy. Pull that, pull that. Nice noise, a little bit of a cluckling, cluckling. The seats are now loosey goosey, so they can pull down like that. I'm doing well, I'm doing well. Slide into the comfortable leather seats, <laughs> like so. Oh my goodness, right. Now I'm gonna, I'm on the sat nav already, so I'm just gonna go on to, oh no. Oh gosh, menu. Um, I'm, not, I'm not used to this just yet. Menu, S nav. It's not the car, it's me being a donut. Search. Full stop. Oh, no, <laughs> not full stop. Um, Voice control. Ooh. Buckingham Palace. I found several destinations. Yes, you did. And also loads of TripAdvisor um, reviews too, which is fantastic. Also, I'm going to use the voice control again because I like it. A absolute radio. <laughs> the nerves. The nerves are getting to me. I think she's confused because I hesitated. Absolute radio. Yeah. I did it! So, with a bit of a getting used to the car and the functionality, that would be an absolute breeze. Um, so, as we mentioned earlier on, someone who's coming into this for maybe a 10 year old one series may be a little bit kind of overwhelmed by it all. And I can actually kind of see that firsthand. But you would get used to how the car works. You can customize it to work for you and you would get on really well. And it would be an absolute hoot. Let's go to Buckingham Palace, shall we? Hands up. The BMW 5 Series that I'm driving right now is probably not going to be the version that most people will buy, and that's because it's the 530 horsepower M550i X Drive model. And believe me when I say, it is blisteringly fast. Seriously though, this thing has pretty much the same power output as a GT3 racing car. Zero to 62 miles per hour takes just 3.8 seconds, which is crazy, and top speed is limited to 155 miles per hour. What gets me though is how smooth and effortless the engine is. It's a 4.4 litre twin turbocharged V8 and it glides along so nicely. Yet you always know there's tons of power and torque if you need it. And because it's all wheel drive as standard, there's no question as to how it transfers that power onto the road. You just squeeze the accelerator a little bit 
and all the cars in your rear view mirror become smaller and smaller. If you're doing a lot of motorway driving in a short period of time, I honestly can't think of many cars that would be better than this. Even with the big V8 petrol engine, fuel economy is pretty good, achieving 33 miles per gallon on the way up to the chute this morning. As for the other engines in the range, the 520D and the 530D diesels are, as always, are really good. And the 530E plug-in hybrid really is a highlight. Also fitting firmly into the highlight category is the way the 5 Series blends handling and comfort into one very well-judged package. All M550i models come with adaptive suspension, but this particular car has the M Adaptive Suspension Pro option, and that adds active roll stabilisation and rear wheel steering. The benefits of this is a more stable and agile handling car, also with a surprisingly tight turning circle. For other models in the range, I'd recommend getting the optional variable damper control as it really makes the ride a lot smoother, especially on those models with larger wheels. Note that, however, this isn't an option on the 520D, the 520i or any of the SE spec models. Regardless of spec though, the BMW 5 Series really is very refined and it keeps you nicely insulated in this luxurious cabin. Again, with the larger wheels you are going to increase that road noise, but it's not enough to spoil what is a really relaxing place to be in. So maybe now you're thinking of buying yourself a BMW 5 Series. Well, if that's the case, which version do you go for? Here's my top three recommendations for you. So the cheapest version, you want to go for the 520i SE spec model. If you are a company car user, then I'd recommend that you check out the 530e plug-in hybrid with its 11% BIK tax rate. And if you're a little bit of a speed demon like me, then you need to have a look at the M5 competition model. The automotive world may be flooded with high-end luxury SUVs, but for those that want something a little more traditional, the BMW 5 Series is still one of the finest cars that money can buy. Honestly, I really wish I didn't have to give this car back. It's so fast, so comfortable, and so packed with clever gadgets and technology, it really is very hard to find fault with it. If it were up to me, this 550i X-Drive model would be a dream spec. Mwah! But I also think you'd get plenty of value if you went for the 530e plug-in hybrid or the 530d with the M Sport Pro Pack. Do I really have to give it back? 